What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in today's video I want to talk about how you can use extensions to quickly create windows and other objects like that inside your model using the extension Flex Tools. So Flex Tools is just one example of an extension that can make your life a whole lot easier by saving you a bunch of modeling time. Um, if you're looking for information on more great extensions make sure to check out my free SketchUp extensions guide at the sketchupessentials.com slash extensions. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so what I wanted to do is I wanted to talk about some of the functions contained inside of Flex Tools, which is an extension for SketchUp that allows you to create things like doors and windows and other things like that. Um, I do want to note that if you don't want to use Flex Tools, you could substitute this by going into the 3D warehouse and searching for dynamic windows. Um, that would probably work as well if you're looking for a free option for that. But Flex Tools packages all of these up in a really nice uh, package that's going to make your life a whole lot easier. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you just how much easier um, creating things like doors and windows can be inside of a model. And so let's say we have like a rough a rough house that's going to look something like this. So something that kind of turns a corner, just kind of a simple shape. Um, I may move this forward just a little bit, maybe something like this. Um, but what I want to do first is I want to start off and I just want to create an exterior wall. So I'm just going to draw my floor plate and then I'm going to type the F key to activate offset and I'm just going to single click on this edge and offset this wall in. And in this case I'm going to say my exterior wall is going to be six inches thick. Um, you can make your exterior wall thickness whatever you want it to be. Um, just for a simple example we're just going to do that. And then I'm just going to use the push pull tool to push pull this up about 10 feet. And so that gives me kind of a basic wall um, and a basic house that I can use in here in order to uh, kind of move forward with what I want to create. The other thing I may do is I may go ahead and draw a face across the top here and I'm going to use an extension from TIG called the TIG Roof Tool um, in order to create a roof on this building really quick. So and uh, I will link to that extension in the notes down below as well as a tutorial on that. But really the way that that works is that'll just take a face and you can create a lot of different kinds of roofs. In this case I'm just going to create a hipped roof and you can see how I've got many different options in here. I'm just going to kind of leave this as is and I'm going to click OK. And so what this does is this gives me kind of a basic shape inside my model of my house. So you can see how creating my walls and creating my roof once I kind of knew that got really easy. And so coming in here and trying to do this with the follow me tool or something like that could have been a lot more frustrating. So already I've saved myself a bunch of time. Now I want to talk a little bit about the Flex Tools options that you have in here, specifically some of the windows and stuff like that. So to start off, I just want to go in and I want to add a door. And so the door is going to be the first option in here. It's going to be the Flex Door. And when I add the Flex Door, you can see how this is going to kind of, uh, this is going to kind of lock to whatever or uh, inference to whatever face I put my mouse over. What this is, is this is a component that has the glue to option selected inside the component options. What that means is when I click, that's going to glue this to a face. And what these are going to do, if your wall has any thickness, is these are actually going to cut a hole in your wall. And so I'm not going to talk too much about that quite yet. We'll talk about it more when we have windows. But what I want to point out is I want to point out this door is dynamic. And when I say it's dynamic, what I mean is if I go in here and click on this and then come and click on the component options, you can actually adjust the width and height of your door. So like for example, if I want this door to be a, we'll call this a 36 inch door I can just set the width to 36 inches and let's say I want the height to be something like 7 feet um, I can come in here and set this to 84 inches and then there's a couple other options I'm not really going to mess with here but when I click apply what you're going to notice is this door is actually going to resize based on what I gave it here so now if I come in here and measure this from floor to the top of the door it's going to be 7 feet high and it's going to be three feet wide. And uh, so the other nice thing about these being dynamic components is when I come in here and click on this button for interact with dynamic components, you can open and close the doors and the windows by clicking on them using the interact tool. And so what this can do is this can really save you a bunch of time. So let's say for example that I want to create a whole bunch of windows or maybe not a whole bunch but some windows on the exterior of this house. What I could do is I could come in here and I could set my height above ground, whatever I want that to be, so like 3 foot 6 inches. 
and I could drop a guide in here using the tape measure tool. And I could do the same thing maybe on this wall right here. Whoops. So just kind of setting how high I want this these windows to be. Well now I can come in here and I can add different kinds of windows. And so the newest window that's been added is this casement double window. And what this window does is what this will do is this will come in here and this will cut a hole inside this wall. And so I can move this around and you can see how when I move this around the hole for the window um, moves along with it. And I've had some issues with this in the past. It hasn't worked 100% of the time, but even if you had to come in here and manually push pull an opening through this wall, it's still a lot faster than coming in here and modeling all of this myself. And the nice thing about this is you can still come in here and with the component options, you can adjust things like the width. So if I want this to be 48 inches, inches by 48 inches. I can do that. I can adjust the thickness of the wall that it's going in. So six inches and I can set my offset to something smaller if I want to. All of these things are adjustable um, inside of your dynamic component. So you can see how when I click on this, this adjusts based on that. And so both of these will also open and close because they're dynamic components. So you can set those to be different things depending on what you're trying to display. And so really what I'm getting at though is just how much easier it is to use these dynamic components than it is to come in here and model things like this myself. Because I've spent a lot of time in the past modeling windows. So another example is like this flex window here. This is also gonna do the same thing where I can place it and then I can come back in here. You can also right click on these and go down to dynamic components and go to component options, but I can adjust this as well. So let's say for example that I want this one to be a little bit wider. Maybe I want this one to be 72 inches wide. So I can set this to be 72 inches. I can set my height to the same height as my other window, like 48 inches or something like that. And then I can come in here and I can adjust the number of vertical and horizontal distributions that I have in here. So let's start by clicking apply. So you can see how that came in here and that made my window wider and also shorter. So now these are the same height, but I can also come in here and adjust this so that it has more vertical divisions. So you can see I was able to really quickly adjust the number of divisions that are in here. Um, and then you could do the same thing where you could adjust your wall spacing or your wall thickness and also your inset. But you can see how by being able to create these automatically using this kind of component, it's just a huge time saver. So I could come over here and do the same thing, maybe with like a vertical slider or something like that. And then if I wanted to, I could even just copy that along the wall using the move tool in copy mode. You can see how those components are coming in here and cutting openings in these walls. So we could do the same thing on this back wall, just really quickly drop a guide in here just to make sure that we're using the same height. And then you can place a window here. You could use the move tool in copy mode. And then once you've moved one, you could type in times two and hit the enter key in order to uh, place two more on this side as well. And so you can see how by using things like extensions, um, you can really automate a lot of this process and, and spend less time modeling things like windows and more time actually focusing on your design overall. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Are you using extensions in your workflow? Do you find that they save you a lot of time? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.